Hello everybody, my name is Zeva the Jester and today I'm going to be talking about some beginner mistakes that I noticed in people's load orders as well as a beginner's guide to modding. Let's get right into it because I hate long intros. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is I want to just show you guys exactly how your mod should be layered, just in general, with the possibility of exceptions of course this on the right of your screen is going to be how you want your mods to look generally now with that being said there is a few things that I've noticed that some people will do and there's a few things that I notice even some uh, experienced modders will do so these tips will become more and more advanced throughout the video so we're just gonna go down the list uh, from graphics all the way down to lag reducers uh, just some general tips for all of them Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is graphic overhauls graphic overhauls are pretty easy to understand once you just get a simple explanation of them These are the mods that are pretty straightforward and these are the mods that you typically want at the top of the load order for reasons being if the tech if the graphics are all the way at the top then it allows the city overhauls and all the other texture mods that you have to blend in nicely with them they also are one of the biggest types of mods that you can have as they overhaul everything. The main problem I've seen with graphic overhauls is graphic overhauls tend to be like a 50-50 coin toss a lot of the time because some of these are not updated and some of these are pretty old so they could be a little bit outdated. Um, that's really all there is to it. Sometimes it can be a little bit laggier than the others. Uh, I guess really all that you need to do to figure out if it is, is you would need to put this, uh, try and find a graphic mod that doesn't affect your performance first. Go into Helgen with a graphic mod installed, see if it works. If you wind up crashing or you're lagging a lot, keep that far away from your load order. There's a few that I'll, uh, recommend to you I've already made multiple videos on some good graphic mods I definitely go recommend you check those out testing your graphic mod before you actually start the game is a good way to ensure that your game runs smoothly throughout the course of you know the rest of the game uh, Helgen has a lot going on so it's a pretty decent way to test if your mods work uh, except for of course NPC mods and encounter mods because that will mess up the intro most of the time but graphic mods texture mods weather mods all that stuff I would recommend that you all test that out in the beginning uh, just so you can see how the game looks and see how it runs with it installed so it's a very good solid way to test these boys out and uh, I definitely recommend you do that so that is how you handle graphic mods if you're not experienced with okay now the most important one of the texture and all that other stuff we've got weather mods weather mods are the most sensitive mods that you can really have in Skyrim and there's so many mistakes I've seen with these this is really the this is gonna be like a good like 30% of the video uh, is gonna go tied back to weather mods it's honestly figuring these tips out about these things is how my game runs so smooth despite having like 15 followers constant spells constant chaos and all that other stuff it really does tie back into weather mods somehow or at least a lot of it does the reason weather mods are so fucking sensitive is because these things tend to not only change the weather cycle which is a lot of in and of itself um, they also tend to tie in with graphical overhauls and they also tend to tie into lighting mods and texture mods so it's very there's a lot of scripts that are being used with these that you can't really mess with if it has something else tied into it the most common mistake I see with weather mods is the fact that Considering now that you know that it ties into lighting mods, sometimes what I see people do is they will have a weather mod that changes lighting alongside a consistent lighting mod. Now, when a lighting mod is consistent, 
and how it's supposed to keep the game looking and then you have a weather mod that changes that lighting that's where the issue occurs and that's when you start to lag maybe crash when you're out in the middle of nowhere and that's what causes these issues so how do you fix it all right so basically I would say if you have a weather mod with lighting purposes for example rustic weather's modularity two of four fog right let's see let's take this one just for example don't pair it with a weather mod and don't pair it with a lighting mod you only need one weather mod and that is it you do not need a lighting mod if your weather mod does it for you something a lot of people notice is that i actually don't have a lot of lighting mods sometimes i don't even use them i don't use them because i personally allow weather mods to do that for me because the weather will change the lighting it doesn't need to look super super realistic for the game to be enjoyable because sometimes the weather mods will do that on their own if you don't want a weather mod then you would go for a lighting mod a good choice uh, is you could also use series uh, weather mods like 13's Gamma Infinium and 13's Toolbox I have another weather mod video that I recommend you check out but those are just examples of mods that are part of a series that you could download which um, include both lighting and weather changes so you can do that you should not be downloading lighting mods alongside weather mods if you don't know if a weather mod has lighting purposes or not and most of the time they do I'd say a solid 90% of the time weather mods affect the lighting somehow so I would definitely recommend you uh, just be very careful with your lighting mods and very careful with your weather mods especially alright so the next thing that I want to talk about now is I want to talk about texture mods so texture mods are mods that tend to be confused with graphic mods but what's the difference between uh, graphic mods and texture mods there really isn't that much of a difference aside from the fact that the texture mods tend to only look after one specific thing instead the graphic mods are gonna go after everything so you can have texture mods alongside graphic mods the difference is text graphic mods are at the top texture mods are at the bottom you want the graphic mod to overhaul the texture overhaul because the texture overhaul will only focus on that one specific thing and the graphic mod will go after everything these are very easy these are very straightforward essentially what this does is they just focus and target one specific thing that graphic overhauls do not now I haven't seen this very often but I do see it every once in a while can you have multiple texture mods installed yes you can you can have multiple texture mods installed but you can't have multiple texture mods installed if they affect the same thing for obvious reasons being of texture glitches say you have two texture overhauls affecting rocks or you have one bundle where it affects rocks and then you have one that specifically affects rocks and you want the bundle but you also want this specific texture mod I personally would just say just stick with the bundle it does more you may not like the rocks more than the other one if it bothers you that much take the bundle off it's not gonna cause anything other than texture issues I haven't had a lot of lag related issues with texture mods personally so you want these at the bottom secondly don't have two texture mods that affect the same thing um, and that's fine an example you can have the farmhouse texture pack and you can have the rocks texture pack along with the graphic overhaul you can do that so there's All right that. lighting overhauls so lighting overhauls me being completely honest are the mods that I have the least experience with but they are still pretty easy to get a grip on um, when you're at a beginner level. Lighting mods tend to be incompatible with, uh, of course, weather mods, other lighting mods, and shadow mods. You definitely want to have them as a standalone mod. Uh, you don't want to have them when you have a lighting mod installed. You don't want to have them when you have a weather mod installed shadow mods uh, you don't want them when you're adding light posts anywhere you tend to want to have these towards the bottom now they will work perfectly fine with sound mods if they are in the right spot but if they're not they can really fuck up your game pretty bad for some reason and I'm not ex exactly sure why all I know is that they will 
So you want to have these towards the bottom of the load order uh, in the in the format that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, and you want them as a standalone. So all right. So now we're going to go down to the next type of uh, graphical overhaul type thing, and that is city overhauls. City overhauls are overhauls that will actually change what the individual city in question looks like and this could add objects it could take objects away it can make it could add textures it could add just about anything you think of to the the city in question now the way you handle these is the same thing as a graphics mod you test them one at a time and honestly I'd say that's like this so the safest way to do that but if you're ch if you're feeling a little bit bold and you're feeling a little bit lost of time what you could do is you could test a bunch of mods in one city specifically or you could test one mod for each city specifically go into a game and travel to all these cities to figure out which ones work which ones don't because really all you're looking for is lag and crash you're looking for lag spikes you're looking for texture bugs you're looking for gray face bug you're looking for just about anything there is and yes i said gray face bug because some of these will straight up bug out the npcs and i don't know why but that's a very very rare issue i have rarely ever seen but it's it does happen occasionally um i would say go into these mods not in these mods go into these cities download maybe a few of them if you're lost of time but if you're not and you have the time or you have the day off i would say download these one at a time and see what works see which ones cause you to lag the most which ones cause you to lag the least uh based off vanilla game alone because vanilla is where you're going to experience a few bugs a little bit of lag and that's fine that's where uh the mods in the later in the video will come in handy but you're looking for the mods that look good, don't lag your game as much, and you're also looking for the mods that kind of work with other mods. So, let's take for example 13 City Planner Series. This is a mod that where there actually is multiple mods within it that you could actually download. So, I definitely recommend you look into this one because right here it says this. 13 City Planner Series Light, and then you add in 13 and J's Spooky Woods and then you add in JK Skyrim and then Rins, JK's interior, JK city planner patch, etc. All I'd say in regards to city overhauls is just make sure you know the difference between a standalone mod and a mod that is part of a series. These are pretty simple to figure out. Um fairly fairly simple. So yeah. Okay, now that we got the textures and all that other shit out the way it's time for npcs the most the most um troubling type and style of mod that i have ever seen when it comes to people's load order okay the first thing you need to know and you absolutely need to know is population mods population mods tend to be the number one reason that I notice people's games do not work. This includes population, encounters, bandits, villains and heroes, whatever it is. Uh, a lot of people tend to completely overestimate and overstock their game with NPCs because they want the game to feel more alive. And there is a way that you can do this in a way where your game is capable of doing that. but. A lot of people just cram a bunch of mods together with NPCs and then they're wondering why they crash in the middle of a forest. It's because there's so many mods at play there that they're all spawning at the same time in the same area and you can't see them because they will spawn and they're not going to spawn right in front of you. Very rarely they will, but they're not going to spawn right in front of you most of the time and when you can't see them and there's like 50 NPCs spawning from different mods because we don't know what mods you have installed but you have like three uh, different types of mods installed that's going to be the reason why you tend to crash in random spots sometimes towns sometimes on the road most time by bridges 
Yeah, for some reason, Bethesda tends to really uh, love bridges. They love bridges. Uh, they tend to have all their NPCs spawned by the bridges. Uh, I guess it's because it looks cinematic when there's a, an NPC crossing a bridge. Uh, I don't know what it is. Man, they just like bridges, okay? But yeah, people tend to tell me that they crash near bridges. Now, the reason that they do this is because NPCs will spawn near bridges. And bridges tend to also be a problem in and of, of themselves, but we'll just get... We'll just skip that for now. They tend to spawn near bridges, and if you have a mix of population mods, encounter mods, civil war mods, or merchant mods, bandit mods, they will all spawn right there. <laughs> Out of sight near you somewhere wherever it is and that will cause the game to crash before you even see them so that's usually what winds up happening lightly populated settlements is a very very good mod for this very good standalone very good for keeping the game looking alive and the best part is it stays in its lane and only affects the towns and that is it this mod is perfect for this because this is the mod that will only affect the small towns and cities it'll only add a small amount of npcs that are rather insignificant they're killable so that if they wind up dying there's it's not going to be a big burden on the game and it keeps the game looking alive most of the people that come in here are lore accurate like maybe hunters very rarely a few wizards and mercenaries maybe even hired thugs maybe even just merchants uh, you can talk to all these people they don't have extensive dialogue but they do have typical dialogue and they look good there's no gray face bug there's no none of that so it's a very good mod for that and personally I think this is the only real mod that you should really be using purely if, because of that alone I recommend it it's very good and a uh, complete shout out to Zeno of Elia because they made a very very good mod for this specific purpose okay so now that we got population mods out of the way let's talk about encounter mods because this is ten this tends to be where the issue occurs most encounter mods are mods that are going to spawn in people on the roads these tend to be anything alongside stormcloak patrols imperial patrols encounters with the courier maybe skeletons and bandits and vampires and whoever else so number one there's a few things that you need to consider encounter overhauls will interact with population mods they don't conflict but they will interact and if you have a shit ton of npcs going in and out of white run because of overhauls or you have and you already have a lot of npcs in there already that's where maybe some of the lag from the cities are coming from you have a lot of that going on uh, so what you really want to do is you want to have a light settlement mod uh, maybe the one that I suggested maybe you know about another one that I don't know about yet I have I've only been back for a few days you also want to know that these encounter mods will go into the cities and will hang out by the cities which is probably why the lag was so bad by your cities because you had so many NPCs in one area and maybe you just couldn't see them so with that being said these mods will interact with each other beautifully they usually never conflict but they can if you have too many NPCs walking around so what I recommend you do is you have a world encounters overhaul not an encounter hall with just specific things so you don't have to have a lot of them so for example civil war patrols right is a very popular mod but it only only affects the stormcloaks and imperials this is an encounter mod that is mainly used for role playing the civil war that is it however a world encounters overhaul will add everything so it tends to be an overhaul whereas this tends to be a standalone so a standalone mod with um the stormcloaks and imperials this tends to be something that you only really want to use if you only plan on really milking out the civil war quest whereas a world overhaul will do everything as well as the civil war patrols so a lightly populated settlement one world overhaul world encounter overhaul will have your game flooding with npcs without any lag whatsoever because you don't have so many of them spawning at once you've got one world encounter 
overhaul, spawning a good amount of NPCs for you to see all over the roads, and you have the lightly populated settlements, and you have them interacting with each other, so it's a good, it's a good mix. Definitely give that a shot. Okay, now that we got the NPCs out of the way, I want to talk about the next big thing, which is combat mods. Combat mods. Now, you I think everybody knows that you just need one. You really only need one. These are very, very straightforward. You're never really going to have a real issue with these unless, unless you're experiencing bugs in terms of combat. That's how you can tell really if your uh, combat mod is broken. Uh, I honestly like, I kind of like a lot of these. I like Valoraven, I like YMD2, I like Skylight Combat Overhaul. I did like Blade and Blunt, it was a favorite of mine, better combat AI. Now there's only a few things that are very confusing about these is the fact that sometimes behavior mods are actually different than combat mods. Behavior mods tend to affect very specific NPCs depending on their character type will def depend on if they are the type to flee, fight, be defensive, or be aggressive. Whereas combat mods will affect how they fight altogether. So you can actually mix up these a little bit. You can kind of mix them together. For example, better combat AI tends to actually mix with a lot of these. Better combat AI is very, very simple and subtle. For example, smarter NPC behavior, use power attacks more effectively, attack more aggressively when in groups, try to bash and stagger, attack when their enemy's not blocking, attempt to block, disengage from melee combat, when they gain distance from the enemy. This is not going to really be affected by a combat mod if that combat mod isn't isn't necessarily going to change these things. Some of them actually only change movement and a lot of them change um, clashes. So let's take a look at for example this one. Slower pace, not a Dark Souls immersive many balance improvements, stamina is more important, no scripts, so, and can be installed during your playthrough, right? This one seems very, uh, very simple, and it actually explains everything. NPCs are more aggressive and are more defensive, depending on their class. They are more likely to power, attack through a block, bash to interrupt attacks, circle or fall back, and attack more often in general. So this really just kind of matches perfectly with Smarter Combat AI. All attributes, health, magic, and stamina regenerate faster, but no longer regenerate immediately after they are spent or drained. Smarter Combat AI doesn't do that, right? Does it? It doesn't really do that, right? Uh, wider attacks, blah, blah, blah. We're looking for stamina. No, it does not. So it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect that at all. So that would work. No scripts, many balance improvements. So that's just, I'm assuming, talking about weapons and health. So... Com smarter combat AI doesn't affect that either. Slower pace. Better combat AI. Smarter combat AI. Does it do that? Nope, it does not s slow the pace at all. At least not not what it says here. It kind of says it here that they'll walk, will travel further distances, have higher preference for picking up weapons, better weapons in combat. It says that. But it doesn't say anything about slower pace. So that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is you can mix behavior mods with combat mods. Just as long as you do your due diligence and do the research on it. And make sure that they don't actually do the same thing. So it'll actually make your combat a lot more realistic. It'll make it a lot better. Sometimes you'll get really, really entertaining fights. Like the videos that I've posted on my channel before. Where, for example, Cicero vs. the Royal Guards, Serana vs. Jazargo, those were very, very good fights. And it's all because of me mixing behavior mods with combat mods. Behavior mods can also come in the form of uh, different things like, for example, fleeing. They can come in the example of uh, classes in combat where they'll run away or they'll become more aggressive, more defensive. Those are all behavior mods. They tend to really not be that important in terms of lag. They will not tend. They really won't cause you many issues. Same thing with combat mods. Uh, 
and the way you can test these out efficiently is to put two NPCs together or get your follower to attack somebody alone and just watch how they converse and you'll be able to tell right away if it works or not so definitely give that okay a this is where shit's getting interesting armor and weapon mods they tend to do the same exact thing with different uh... just different ways armor and weapon mods are very standalone they tend not to do anything other than what they usually do very easy to understand kind of straightforward like the texture mods they really only affect ma uh, armor that's really it so they don't they don't really need a, sp a specific spot in the load order personally I put them in the middle uh, but nothing too crazy better mage armor just tweaks the the uh, what's it called the armor cap that's really it for example scholar armor here's another one uh, armor for scholars and frig or vigilance um, what does this do Light armor, okay, it, it just gives you an armor boost, maybe texture, maybe you want textures, maybe you want a texture, crystal glass armor and weapons, literally just makes it blue, these aren't going to affect really anything in the lower order, just as long as you don't have like 500 of them, you'll be fine, uh, slap these in the middle of the lower order, see if you like what they look like, if you don't, then uninstall them and put them somewhere else I think uh, that's really all there is to say about them there really isn't much to them uh, of course unless you're talking about the massive ones that add a lot of texture style armor to a game in a big warehouse those may be an ob those may be an issue but if you really wanna if you really want my advice I would just take the armor that you want Find the mod that does the thing that you want, install that one as a standalone mod, and just have at it. Because you don't, if you don't need the other armor sets that the thing is offering, then why would you have it there, you know? At that point, you're just kind of cramming mods in, and it, the same thing goes for weapon mods. It's literally no different, uh, for the most part. Uh, like I said, with a few exceptions, because there's always a few exceptions when, you, when it comes to mods. Uh, but yeah, weapons and armor mods... Uh, keep them in the middle of the load order don't have too many of them and just you know I don't know just just don't have too many of them really and you'll be fine okay cheat rooms very very unpredictable very unpredictable these could either be the game makers or the game breakers because Sometimes they will fuck with quests. Sometimes they will fuck with lag. Sometimes they will change so many things that they shouldn't be changing. And other times they do none of it. None of that. So I recommend personally the Helgen Armory. I like that mod a lot. That's a good one where it adds in all the well, all the uh, the items that you could have in the game, or it makes clones of it, so you don't actually take it from the quest and break the quest. You um, you have a lot of all the armors, all everything that you need. That's a very good one. Helgen Armory, definitely look it up. But how can you tell if a cheat room is a bad mod? They tend to be huge, for one. They tend to be, they tend to stick out like a sore thumb. If you see any of those mods where the cheat room is huge, has a massive portal or a massive fucking door, or spawners or it has all the actual quest items in there and you wind up finding out that some of your items aren't spawning when they should in your quests that right there is all 110 percent a cheat room issue that right there will break your game and it will be really fucking hard to fix it because it's a quest and yeah i mean there has been times where i went back and i've taken the item from the cheat room and it winds up fixing the quest but there's been times where I've done that same thing for other quests and it doesn't work so I would say if you're gonna use a cheat room use a small one uh, these tend to be better towards the bottom of the load order uh, in the same spot that I recommended in the beginning of the video 
on the list. So that's why they're supposed to be down there. Just because there's nowhere else to really put them, honestly. Uh, they tend to really just kind of be their own thing. But I would recommend you have a small one. Because if you have a small one, it can technically classify as a dud mod. And a dud mod is going to be like 80% of your load order. So if you have a cheat room, make it a small one. Keep it small. Uh, make sure it doesn't f make sure it clones the make sure it clones the quest items that it's giving you instead of giving you the real one so it doesn't mess up with the quests and you should be fine quest mods quest mods tend to be 50 50 they tend to be very 50 50 because like I said you're messing with quests this is like this this is like the thing that the game is built on so you know, I recommend that you use these for bug fixers. There are some bug fixers that are perfect for this. Like there's one that removes the uh, the castle Volcahar door because sometimes the gate doesn't open. Here's a very good one as well, the man who cried wolf, where the most infuriating bugs in the Skyrim patch is this one. This one is annoying as hell. Basically what this does, it doesn't allow you to become the Thane of Solitude. He just sits in the court and does nothing. He just sits there. And he doesn't deliver the news and then you can't complete the quest. This is a this is a quest mod that fixes it. Plain and simple. Like I said, the Volca Hard Door one is another really good one. Because uh, you don't need the door there. He'll open the door whether it's there or not. Because in his little brain, he's a... Uh, He's guarding the door. So, small quest bugs, bugs like that warrant you to have mods that kind of mess with the quest a little bit. All right, lag reducers. Lag reducers and performance mods. These are very important because what these mods do is it can do anything from removing lag to removing crashes, to rem to helping with frame rate, anything along those lines. These are the mods that you definitely want and definitely need because Skyrim is not meant for mods. So there are a few things that you can use or get rid of to make your game run smoother. Me personally, I don't necessarily care too much about the graphics. I like the graphics from like a very, um, in your face perspective I don't really care for subtleties so personally there are things like TLS no more leaves that will remove leaves because you know leaves can cause a little bit of lag not too much but a, but a good amount uh, moving grass as well for some reason footsteps tend to do that a lot as well as footsteps tend to be very crash worthy rocks under the ground that you can't see anything along those lines I recommend you put these at the bottom and the very bottom because some of them actually have overhauls that recommend you to place them at the bottom and some of them have to be at the bottom. TLS FBS mother load is a good one because you need to put this at the bottom so what it does is no wind and immersive forest class together to give you the best performance you will possibly ever get. They work best at the bottom you know they're bottoms. The most important places in your load order are at the top and at the bottom dud mods now dud mods are what I describe to be as anything that doesn't really fit in a certain category um, for example the I am your fan mod magic mods arrows mods crafting mods um, key mods horse mods um, insignificant mods detail mods anything along those lines this is a perfect one we are parent this is a per this is the perfect example of uh, a dud mod is this made by the same guy that made I am your fan because this is looking super similar no it's not by made by the same guy but I guarantee you that guy has seen this mod at least once he apparently, this guy apparently made another one. Oh, he did! <laughs> he did! 
Oh, Jesus. He's so gross. It's so gross, man. This is what he looked like before the 10 month break that I took. And I come back and he looks like this. I'm so sorry, bro. He's been hitting the skooma way too hard. Anyways, dud mods are anything that is insignificant and anything that's not going to have a huge, um, a huge break on the game. Anything like that. There's nowhere to really put them. Uh, you put those in the middle. You put those in between all the mods that I mentioned. Okay, well, I think that's all we got for today, man. Uh, I appreciate everybody stopping by. Uh, let me know if this works. Let me know if it doesn't. I'm always going to be answering questions in the comments. You could also join my Discord server uh, if it's still alive. <laughs> all right, but yeah, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. As always, I will see you all in the next video. Peace out, y'all.